Get ready for Flight 4 of Starship. Updates from Elon Musk after the latest SpaceX static fire test. In this video, find out what Elon Musk just confirmed following SpaceX's successful second static fire test in under three days. Not only that, but Musk has unveiled an incredible new goal for Starship flight for that will leave you in awe. Learn all about the latest developments and plans for the groundbreaking Starship Flight 4 mission. Get ready as we delve into the future of space travel with SpaceX and Elon Musk. This is what Elon Musk just confirmed after SpaceX completed the second static fire test in less than three days. He also revealed the new insane goal for Starship Flight 4 that is unlike any other. Just two days ago, SpaceX completed its first static fire test with the S-29 after successfully activating all six Raptor engines. All these procedures you can view again in the previous episode, but after the test, signs for a second test appeared. However, March 27 still retains the possible closure status, even though SpaceX completed the test. Right on that day, the predictions for the second static fire test came true. Right after that, a new potential risk to health and safety alert appeared and it determined March 27 would be the day for the test with a time frame from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening. The specific time was determined and now we will focus on the latest test process. From the morning of the 27th, in order to prepare for the test, the roads were closed and the test pad was cleared. At approximately 12.13 p.m. Central, the tank farm began operating and we could see fuel starting to be vented from the fuel tanks. At about 12.51, the process of loading liquid oxygen fuel on the ship began with the appearance of the vapors. Just a few minutes later, those lines clearly appeared in the fuel tank section of the ship. The engine chill process then carried on as usual. After all preparations were completed at about 1.30 in the afternoon, the engine was activated. Unlike the static fire on Monday, this time there was only one engine operating therefore the flame generated as well as the dust layer was not as strong as it was in the previous test. The test duration was also quite short, at about only 6 seconds. With just a single engine, the estimated thrust was about 230 tons or 510,000 pounds. It can then be said that the test route of the S-29 is very similar to another prototype. These single-engine tests allow SpaceX to test the engine's reliability for the deorbit burn process. This step will take place after Starship completes all its orbital missions. The engine will be activated to put Starship into the atmosphere re-entry process. The in-space relight demo of the Raptor engine was also one of the goals for Flight 3, but SpaceX later cancelled it and moved this mission to Flight 4. It can then be said that this process is the main focus for SpaceX. On the previous flight, S-28 had an impressive few minutes of re-entry before experiencing problems. That's why SpaceX wants to complete this task in the upcoming flight. Elon Musk said, Goal of this mission is for Starship to get through max re-entry heating with all systems functioning. Instead, SpaceX will focus on completing the Starship re-entry. It's safe to say that re-entry will be the main focal point of attention in Flight 4, and the recent static fire test is the first basis to create success for this attempt. Another special item in this test is the participation of the header tank. In the tweet after the test, they emphasized static fire of a single Raptor engine using the header tanks on Flight 4 Starship. Normally, tests will use fuel from the main tank, but this change is probably for SpaceX to test the reliability of the header when it is directly involved in the operation process. In Flight 3, SpaceX transferred fuel from the header to the main tank in orbit. However, specific data for this process has not been announced by SpaceX yet. Either way, this test is very useful for SpaceX to ensure every part of Starship will work well during the upcoming flight. After this test, it's speculated that S-29 will not undergo any static fire orchestras. It may be rolled back to the production site for some repairs, or it might just stay here and wait for Booster B-11 to arrive at the launch site. B-11 is currently still at the production site, Mega Bay 1. I believe with S-29's recent progress, this booster will soon be rolled to the launch pad to conduct static fire. The reason they were so confident was that before the third launch, they could predict to some degree what would happen to the vehicle. As a result, several upgrades were added to Flight Force hardware, which contributed to accelerating Starship's turnaround. So what are those? As you can see during the most weighted glide back of B-10, the grid fin wiggled quite violently, seemingly losing roll control. 
combined with the Raptor's problem, this could contribute to the super heavy speed becoming uncontrolled, making a soft landing impossible. Perhaps due to realizing the risk of catastrophes on the ocean caused by boosters' extreme landing speed, SpaceX activated rapid unscheduled disassembly. Based on speculation, we can somewhat know what went wrong with this system. For grid fins are actuated electrically and powered by an onboard electrical system, possibly utilizing batteries or another form of power storage. SpaceX tends to employ innovative engineering solutions, so the power source for the grid fins might involve a proprietary technology. Or a combination of different systems. Or it could come from the unsuitable dimension of the grid fin for a large-scale vehicle-like Starship, resulting in the new update on B-11. In May 2023, the media captured the image of the new grid fin being delivered to Mega Bay, likely for B-11 install. In comparison with the grid fins on B-10 at a glance, I see that the new ones appear to be more curved on one side. It sounds like SpaceX wants to test both the flat and curved designs in real tests, so they decided to keep the grid fin's old design or the flat ones on B-10 and test the new one in Flight 4. Clearly, the loss of control in the booster's grid fin in Flight 3 is a predictable thing. The third guess for the issues in the grid fin's roll control is about the actuator. An actuator in the context of Starship's grid fins refers to the mechanism responsible for moving or controlling the grid fins. These actuators are essentially motors that adjust the position of the grid fins in response to commands from the spacecraft's guidance and control system. By controlling the orientation of the grid fins, the actuators can influence the aerodynamic forces acting on the spacecraft, allowing it to perform precise maneuvers such as pitch, yaw, and roll adjustments during descent and landing. These maneuvers are crucial for ensuring a safe and controlled landing of the spacecraft, especially during missions where precision landing is required, such as crewed missions or cargo deliveries to specific locations on Earth or other celestial bodies. Although only a small component, the fins play an important role in SpaceX's goal for Starship this year, successfully recovering both stages. Grid fins are maneuvering surfaces that help in controlling the orientation and stability of the vehicle during descent and re-entry. They resemble a grid or lattice structure, which helps in generating aerodynamic forces to adjust the spacecraft's trajectory. Starship probably takes a couple of tries like with Falcon 9. But it will be easier to control with the better thrust-to-weight ratio of its 33 Raptor engines. The difference in size between Falcon 9 and Starship also creates the difference in the grid fin's design. Falcon 9 has four grid fins, each measuring about 1.5 meters long and 1.2 meters wide. These allow much better control of the vehicle in the atmosphere than small thrusters. Being originally developed by the Soviet Union half a century earlier as control surfaces for intercontinental ballistic missiles, the grid fins could be rotated up to 20 degrees and worked well. On the big rocket, there is no doubt that the fins are larger on Super Heavy, but it's not the only difference. The Falcon 9's first stage retracts its grid fins during launch, minimizing atmospheric drag on its way through Earth's atmosphere. Rather, the Super Heavy's fins are fixed in an outward position. Possibly, SpaceX engineers calculated that the mass penalty for a system to retract and extend the fins was too high. They also believed that doing away with such a system reduced the work and time needed to refurbish the first stages between launches. Nevertheless, the grid fin still needs to be moved in pitch, yaw, and roll to steer the rocket. Unlike hydraulic fluid on Falcon 9, Super Heavy adopted an electronic steering system to adjust the fins. This electric power is transferred and moves the fin by an actuator. Now let's move to Ship 29. As you can see when Starship tested its ability to open and close the payload door in space, it actually looked like the door struggled to open fully. Not only that, its closing sequence was not perfect. At about T plus 30 minutes and 19 seconds, despite being closed, the door jolted inside the payload bay and began shaking, which looked more anomalous than anything. Something could have gone wrong, the door could be stuck or loose or something completely different could have happened. Some raised doubt that not closing the door tightly released the gas from inside or even allowed the plasma to enter the vehicle, leading to the pressure decrease and impacting the structural rigidity inside. Therefore, I think that SpaceX should focus on solving this part in the next flight. The heat shield would need to be upgraded one more time even though the falling of some tiles during re-entry is not a serious problem. The heat tiles are light and fragile. 
SpaceX must determine improved ways to prevent the tiles from falling off during the next launch in about six weeks. Talking about Flight Force goal, SpaceX's president and COO Gwenny Shotwell confirmed that the flight would not carry Starlink satellites just yet. SpaceX needed to focus on getting Starship's reentry rights and for the booster in Starship to successfully land. SpaceX's president and COO Gwenny Shotwell was the star speaker at the Washington Satellite 2024 event. She touched on many key elements. Shotwell added that the goal for Starship this year is to reach orbit, deploy satellites, and recover both stages. The two stages will then be full stack to conduct wet dress rehearsals and be ready for launch, which is estimated for early May. In the latest update, NASA and SpaceX delayed the first Falcon Heavy launch of the year until no earlier than June 25. The delay comes after the Sensor Core Booster's testing routine at SpaceX's rocket development and test facility in McGregor, Texas revealed a leak. This Falcon Heavy mission is responsible for launching the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellites, Weather Satellite, and Group on Earth Observations Orbit. This mission was originally scheduled for the 30th of April. Then on February 27, NASA announced the flight would be postponed to May due to a reported liquid oxygen leak with the core booster. And now, it'll be pushed back again to June, perhaps in order to let SpaceX fix the problem and prepare for the mission. Despite the delay, relevant agencies still express optimism about the current progress. All three boosters of Falcon Heavy in this mission are new, so it's difficult to avoid the initial problems. Currently, the boosters are still being brought to McGregor for a full round of testing, notably the full static fire. After those tests are completed, the rockets are moved to either Florida or California for their launch campaign. Because the three boosters on the next mission are all new, SpaceX will conduct another brief static fire at Launch Complex 39A ahead of launch. In the upcoming mission, the core booster B-1087 will be burned in orbit while the two side boosters B-1072 and B-1086 will land in landing zones 1 and 2, like most previous flights. Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellites will be the first of three Falcon Heavy missions planned for this year, the other two being NASA's Europa Clipper and Astrobotics Griffin Moon Lander. Although launching fewer than last year, I feel that this year's Falcon Heavy missions are very important. There is a general consensus that this year's Falcon Heavy missions are very important, especially the lunar mission at the end of the year. Also related to the moon mission, NASA just revealed some very interesting information related to the mission for Artemis 3, a mission involving SpaceX. Specifically, NASA has chosen the first three science experiments to be deployed by astronauts on the moon's surface on the Artemis 3 mission in 2026, notably lunar effects on agricultural flora which will study how spacecrafts fare in the exotic lunar environment. As explained by NASA officials, lunar effects on agricultural flora will be the first experiment to observe plant photosynthesis, growth and systemic stress for sponsors in space radiation and partial gravity, black growth and development data, along with environmental parameters measured by lunar effects on agricultural flora, will help scientists understand the use of plants grown on the moon for both human nutrition and life support on the moon and beyond. This is considered an important step for humanity to determine the potential for living on this natural satellite. If the survival of plants in extreme environments can be proven, subsequent missions will advance this work. Plants will be an important factor, provide the oxygen necessary, to provide the oxygen necessary for life as well as the self-sufficient food when settling on the moon as well as further discoveries. Although selected, it is not certain that these three systems will fly on Artemis III. Everything will only be determined after NASA makes an official decision in the next few days. As for Artemis 3, the mission is still scheduled for 2026. SpaceX is still ramping up the Starship system this year to aim to complete Starship HLS next year. They also plan an uncrewed Starship HLS demo in 2025 in preparation for the official mission, which will take place a year later. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.